Hey everyone, welcome to episode number 62 of the Bill Podcast. And in this episode, we'll be going through Mocha, which is a JavaScript testing framework for Node.js and the browser. So in the past couple of months or so, I've been doing a lot of testing with Mocha and I found it incredibly useful as well as fun. So before we dive into the code, let's go through some of the websites relevant to Mocha. So mockajs.org is the main Mocha website. This will give you a lot of uh, brief overview of what uh, Mocha can do. And of course, we will touch through a lot of it. And then there is, of course, the GitHub repository on Mocha. Go ahead, take a look at the code if you're interested. And I also like the wiki page of Mocha GitHub because this is where all the various add-ons are listed and this comes in really useful. So we will definitely go through a lot of the assertion libraries. We will go through Sinon.js a little bit for mock stubs and spies. We'll also go through reporters, headless testing, test coverage, and so on and so forth. Of course, I'll go through one of each, but we are all free to explore the rest. Uh, so once we get the concept for one of them, it is uh, fairly easy to pick up the rest. There is also a blanket JS, which we will cover for the test coverage, as well as Sinon JS for mock stubs and spies. And finally, we will use Selenium WebDriver to test browser. So let's get started with Mocha. Here I am in a completely empty folder in my desktop. The very first thing we will do is kind of initiate the package.json file, just so that we can track the various packages we install. So I'll do an npm init. And there you go. Now when I open it in Sublime Text, I have a package.json. So why don't we now go ahead and npm install mocha. So we'll do npm install mocha dash dash save dash dev because mocha, since it's a testing library, it is probably only used in the development environment. So now that it is installed, if we go back to our text editor, you will see that there is a node modules folder. And if we expand, there you go, there is mocha. And of course, one of the very first thing I like to do is check the version. And we will also do dash dash help to kind of see what are some of the common commands. So now that Mocha is installed, why don't we go ahead and create our very first test file? So I'll just call it index spec to note that this is a test file .js. So inside the test file, we will now start using the Mocha library. And in order to start, we will do describe block. And we will put the method name. Let's uh, call it sanitize because we will be sanitizing some word inputs. And the second argument is just an anonymous function. And this will simply take an it blocks. This is where you kind of uh, say what the method will return or what the method will do. So in this case, let's just say it returns lowercase of a string. Very simple, trivial example so that we can concentrate what Mocha does. And why don't we do another one? So let's say it removes any hyphen. That's it. Why don't we go ahead and run Mocha? So if we do Mocha and then pass in the test file, which is index.spec.js, notice what happens. It will immediately detect that there are two pending tests and it will beautifully write down the names as well. Now, this is what Mocha, the testing library, will do, which is to kind of provide a framework to write different methods and what it does. But if you want to sort of assert or test what the functions are doing, you have to use some kind of assertion library. When I first started with the concept of testing, I used to get really confused about testing library versus assertion libraries. So let's go through that. So there are various assertion libraries that we can pick. Uh, we will be using chai and then expect. Of course, you are free to choose your own preference. So this is the chai homepage. And if you look at plugins, there are tons of plugins uh, that uh, you can use along with chai. But more importantly, let's look at the Chai API. And why don't we click here, expect or should. So what a testing assertion library does is something like this. You can say that, hey, expect something to equal to something else. So why don't we use one of them so it will make it much more clearer what it does. So for this, we will install Chai. So I will do npm install Chai, of course, dash dash save dev. 
So since we'll be using chai, why don't we require it? We will say var chai equals to require chai. And under chai, we will be using the expect syntax. So we will say expect require chai dot expect. Now this is where the fun part comes in. If we want to include the assertion library, we will have to pass in the second parameter, which is a function. And this is where we will do a very simple one. Expect, say, hello world to dot equal, simply hello world. Obviously, this equals to hello world. It is a trivial example, but hopefully it will help us understand what it does. So now if we run the test once again, so once again, it will be mocha index spec. Notice that one is passing and one is pending. Why don't we try to fail it? So we'll say hello world is equal to hello world. You'll see that it is failing because obviously these two strings are not equal to one another. Why don't we play with a little bit more various types of assertion. So for this, I will simply make a variable so that we can pass in the variable and call it hello world. And we will basically expect hello world word here to expect hello world. So equal is one of the type of uh, assertions. Why don't we try a new one? So let's say word. You can also say to not equal, say a capital letter, hello world. So you can assert the opposite. You can also say expect word to be a string. And of course, you can also say to not be a number. Why don't we run the test and see what happens? Yep, it is still passing. Why don't we try out one last assertion? So expect word to contain hello. So notice that these matchers make it easy to test a lot of things. So let's run Mocha once again, and yup, it is still passing. Now at this point, you might be wondering, hey, this is not really doing anything. Where is my function which actually does the sanitization? So why don't we go ahead and create the source file, or rather the file to be tested that actually returns a lower case of a string. So to do that, I will simply create a new file and call it index.js. And inside here, I will implement the function. So in order to expose the function, we will need to use the word exports and then sanitize. And it equals to a function which basically takes in a word and it simply returns word dot to lowercase. That's it. Of course, once again, this is a trivial example so that we can concentrate on what Mocha does. So now instead of just word and then equal to hello world, we will pass in the function. So in order to pass in the function, we will have to expose it or rather require it here. So we'll say word equals to, and we will require the index file or rather the file to be tested, which is simply index. And now we can say that, hey, let it be input word. And we can say output word equals to word.sanitize, which is the name of the function. And then we pass in the argument input word. And we will expect the output word to equal to all of this matchers. All right, so if we have implemented the function correctly, our test should pass, which means to say the capital letter will return small letter and so on and so forth. So why don't we go ahead and run it? And there you go, it is still passing. But this time it is actually running word.sanitize, which is defined here. How, we do, how do we know that it is running this? Why don't we just simply do a console log running? And now when we execute the test once again, you will see there you go, the console log there. So it is actually coming to this file and executing this function. So I'll just remove the console log. And next, why don't we go ahead and implement this function, which is removing any hyphen, or rather sanitize does two things. It returns a lowercase and also removes any hyphen. So the very first thing, even before implementing the feature, we will write a failing test. And it will be exactly the same, input and output, but this time the input word will contain a little hyphen. And what should it expect? So expect output word. So if you pass in hello world with a hyphen, 
two dot equal, it will be hello space world. Why don't we execute mocha? And you'll see that the second test is failing because it is obviously not removing the hyphen. At this point of time, we will go back to index.js where the function is defined. And let's implement the removing of hyphen feature. So we'll simply do replace hyphen globally with a simple space. And now if we run mocha, there you go, it is passing. So now that we know the simple features of mocha, why don't we go ahead and learn a little bit about hooks, which is, let's say you want to execute something before each test. So you can add a before each hook and then inside an anonymous function, why don't we, for the sake of example, just do a uh, console log before. So if you run mocha, this time you'll see that before is printed out before each of the it blocks. Of course, you can do before once all the tests and you can just uh, execute before. And this time you will see before is printing out just once. There is similar concept with after. So I will just console log after. And yep, after is execute once. And you can also do after each. And yep, after is printed out twice. Now, these are useful if you want to initialize, uh, let's say, database, if you want to work with the server-side end-to-end testing, or if you want to close something after all the tests is run. So these hooks become useful. The other thing that is useful, especially during debugging, is let's say out of, say, hundreds of test cases, you want to run only this one. So in that case, you can do dot only, and let's run mocha you will notice that it will only run this one. And you can also do skip. So let's say you want to skip only this one because say this one is failing and you want to ensure that the rest of it is passing. Just run dot skip and there you go. It will skip and it will say one is pending. So these are little useful hooks and exclusive and inclusive stuff to implement with Mocha. So I will remove dot skip. The next very fun thing are reporters. So with Mocha, so far, we have not been passing options. And uh, what are options? If you do Mocha dash dash help, yep, here are the various types of options that you can explore, but we will go through some of them. So let's go through Mocha index spec and let's try reporters. Firstly, even before running the test, why don't we print out the list of reporters that are available? So there is dot, doc, spec, and what do they actually do? So let's run index spec and after that we'll do reporter say dot. So instead of printing out the what the test says, it will just do dot. This might be useful if you have like 200 or 300 hundreds of tests. Why don't we try out doc? So this will basically return you in terms of HTML. And of course you can do doc uh, and pipe it to say out.html and you can open it uh, in browser. And there you have it. Your test results are now available in HTML. There are some really fun ones as well. Why don't we try, say, Nian? Yep, it's a Nian cat. At this point of time, uh, we will notice that, of course, this is a very simple example, but in our test, uh, or rather our application, we might have a lot of test files. So for that, it is useful to create a folder, say, test, and basically transfer or move this uh, spec file inside the test folder. And now if you simply do mocha, aha, of course uh, it cannot find the module because we have to go inside the test folder and change the path. Now it should be dot dot slash index. So let's run mocha once again. Simply mocha, you don't have to pass in the file name anymore. And yep, it will still run because by default, it will look at the test folder. Now, we, if we have a lot of options to pass, it is probably not efficient to keep typing it in the command line. In this case, we can create a file. So let's call it touch. And then inside the test folder, we can call it mocha.opts for all the options. And why don't we add in some details in OPTS? So why don't we say reporter is say Nian cat, and we also want it to be recursive. So let's say even if inside the test folder there are other folders, uh, we wanted to go through 
all the files. So that's recursive. There's also another option say no color. Of course, we're just going to try just for fun. And now if you simply run Mocha, notice that it, it is not uh, having any color and also Nian Cat Reporter is run. Of course, I will change it back to the default. So I'll remove the reporter and I will also remove the no colors. So my Mocha options is really simple, just recursive. And now when I run just Mocha, Notice that it is uh, falling back to the default way of reporting and also there is colors. So mocker ops file comes in really handy. Next, let's go through test coverage, which means to say all the input files for testing, how much of it is covered by testing. Why don't we first start by installing blanket? So npm install blanket dash dash save dev. And once we install Blanket, let's take out index.js. Yep, Blanket is part of dev dependencies. So we will add on one more and simply call it config. And inside here, we will pass in say Blanket. And firstly, let's define the input files or rather the files that the test uses to run. So of course, the very first file is index.js and that's basically the only file we have. The other useful thing is to ignore certain files. So we will say data-cover-never, and this is usually the node modules or the package files. So the other thing is let's uh, edit the test script, which means if you run npm test, it will run the test command. For us, it is simply mocha. But this time we also want to execute blanket and do the test coverage. So for that, we'll do mocha test, which is the folder dash dash require passing an option, require the module blanket dash dash reporter, the other option, which we just went through. And this time we'll use HTML dash cov as a reporter and we will pipe it to a file called coverage.html. So basically, at the end of the day, uh, after we run the test, it will have a new file called coverage.html. Now, before we run a blanket, why don't we uh, write a, a function inside index.html? And uh, obviously, we will not test it. Why don't we call it uh, simply tokenize? And this time, we will pass in a sentence. And we will simply return, say, sentence.split. And we will split the sentence by word. And basically this function will return an array. Obviously we have not tested this. So why don't we run npm test, which will basically run this entire command mocha and then mocha test, which will pipe it through a reporter and to an index or rather coverage.html file. So simply I will come back to the command line and do npm test. And it will obviously look very similar, but if we look at the files, we'll see a new file called coverage.html. So why don't we open this up in the browser? And there you go, it will give you a coverage percentage. It will also tell you which are the files it kind of went through. Obviously it is one file as specified in package.json. And more importantly, it will tell you the line it did not test. So why don't we create a test uh, to test this function tokenize? So obviously we'll come back to index spec. And at this time we will have a new describe blog, say tokenize. And the second argument will be a function and it will simply returns an array of words. Why don't we run mocha or rather NPM test? And of course we will see a pending test, which means all good. And let's write the test. And why don't we create an input, which is basically sentence and then say, hello world, var tokenized sentence equals to, and this is where we will call the function tokenize and we will pass in sentence. So here's where the fun begins. So expect tokenized sentence to, now this time we will be asserting the array. So for this, chai provides another type of matcher. So we'll say include members. And now we will pass in the array. So let's say the first one is hello and the last one is world. And why don't we run the test, which is simply npm test. 
And there you go, we have three passing. But more importantly for the coverage, why don't we refresh the page and you will see it's 100% tested because obviously now we implemented this line. Next, let's go through async testing. So if our function has a callback instead of just returning something, how do we test that? So why don't we implement the function first? And the function will simply be called info function and this will have a callback. So what this function will do is it will go to a GitHub API URL, it will search for some information and it will return as a callback. So for this, we will require the HTTPS node library, so simply HTTPS. Why don't we go to the API URL first? So it will simply be coming from api.github.com and we will be querying a repository. So username slash repository. So it will come back as a JSON structure, which will look something like this. That's all we'll be doing with this function. So let's pass in some options, which is an object, right? And we will also initialize an empty string, which will catch all the data. So great, let's go ahead and implement it, https.request, and we will pass in the options that we just made. And the second function will be an anonymous function, which will take in a response. And response on data, so there'll be a little callback. And string, we will basically add in all the result that's coming in. But response on end, this will basically do a callback and we will need to parse the entire string. So json.parse. And finally, we will also have response on error just so that we can catch the error. And we will simply for now console log the error and also do a callback. But this time the callback will be empty. Or maybe you can pass in the error as well. Yep. And finally, dot end. So just before the callback, why don't we just console log the string just so that we know what's coming. And uh, finally, let's go to index spec the test file and uh, define what is info method. So describe GitHub info and it simply returns repo info from GitHub. And why don't we call the function, which is simply word.info. And as this is a callback, we'll do a reply. Why don't we simply do a console log and reply? All right, then I will just remove the console log from here. Okay, so why don't we run the test now? Simply npm test. Ah, syntax error. Of course, I should spell it properly. So it should be function. Let's run the test once again. So notice here it is passing the test, but hey, where is my console log? So why don't I console log after the word.info function is called? Say, hello, simply hello. So notice here, we are going through hello, but not the callback. So in this case, Mocha allows us to pass in a callback into the function, and then it will kind of denote that, hey, this is an async. And simply, we will call the callback as to done. So now, now, before we call this, why don't I just do dot only so that only this test is run. So now when I do npm test, ah, the time exceeds. So we will simply do a mocha dash dash timeout. Why don't we increase it to 5,000 instead of 2,000 milliseconds? So notice here, hello is printed out. And there you go. You have the entire JSON string coming back in our command line as well. And this is basically the same JSON information as what we notice in the browser. And of course, uh, now since we get the reply, why don't we do expect, say reply dot, let's go back to our JSON. Why don't we do, why don't we query one of the keys? Right, so we can query say dot language, uh, JavaScript, and we can also query say watchers. 157. So we can do reply dot language dot to equal JavaScript. And then once again, expect reply dot watchers to equal simply 157. And I will take out the console log. Let's see how the test now runs. 
And yep, it takes a little bit of time, but uh, definitely uh, it needs that time because it needs to query the GitHub API, but it basically comes back with the correct answer. All right, so this is an example of how to run async test with a done as a callback. But there is a little fault with this test. Every time this test is executed, it actually goes to an external environment, an external website to do its test. And this is not really good because we should be isolating our test environment. So for this, we will have to mock out the response and then we will expect the response to equal to certain uh, variables. So for this, we will be using sinan.js to do some mock stubs and spies. For this episode, we will only do a very simple stub, but uh, you should definitely go and check out sinan.js. It is a very powerful library to do a lot more. So for this, I will clone or copy the basics folder and I will call it Sinon. And let me open up in Sublime Text. So we will have exactly the same code base, but now I will start deleting it, especially the test that requires an external website. For example, this one. So I will delete this. Instead of that, I will create another new test. Or rather, why don't we create the function first? So let the info remain. And in this case, we'll create a new function and let's call it info lang. So it will use the info and it will get the reply and get the language. So for this, the very first argument will be the info function. And the second argument will simply be a callback. So what it does, it will call info function. And of course, it has a callback with the reply, which is the JSON reply from GitHub or any other website or API. And it will call back uh, with a little sentence, say language is, and then we will simply do reply dot language. So this is a really simple example. So instead of calling this function, which has to actually go to GitHub, we will stub it away as the first argument of this function. So let's implement that. We'll go back to the test file and let's call it describe. And here we will call it info language. And as the very first one, we will say return simply language information. And of course we will pass in done because it has a callback. And uh, let's firstly create the reply or rather create the mock variable that comes back from GitHub. So we'll say GitHub repository and instead of the very long JSON string that we saw just now, and we will simply just do language and uh, let's do assembly just to check whether it will take in this variable. And the second one, this is where we will start using Sinon. So before using Sinon, we definitely have to install Sinon. So let's do an NPM install Sinon and of course save dev. And we also have to do an install of Sinon Chai so that we can use the Chai assertions for Sinon. Great, with this, uh, let's require the two files. And then we will require Sinon Chai. And finally, we will do chai.use Sinon Chai. So with this, we will start stubbing this function, which is basically doing a GitHub call. We will stub the function info. So first let's create the stub. So we will create var stub, say sinon.stub. So this is a little special because it has a callback. So we'll say calls arg with, so the first argument, and it will simply return as a callback the object, which is GitHub repo. So now that we created a stub, the next thing we'll do is word.infolang, which is once again defined right here. And instead of the first function actually calling info, we will pass in the stub. So let's try it. We'll pass in the stub. And then of course it will have a callback with a reply as the first argument. And we will simply expect the reply to equal language so what is the sentence we are passing in language is and then the language itself so language is 
This time it should be assembly instead of JavaScript. So language is assembly. And of course we have to call the callback once again, which is done. Before we run the test, why don't we go to mocha ops and add in dash dash timeout, say 5,000. And let's run NPM test. Right, great. Looks like uh, it is passing, but why don't we console log? Why don't we console log the reply here? And more importantly, why don't we go to our file here and let's make a very simple console log here. Say inside info func. Let's run all the test suit once again. Notice here, it will say language is assembly, but this console log inside info function is not run because this entire function is stubbed away which is really great because all we are because we are not testing for github api what we are testing is what we do with the return json so sinon js once again is a very very powerful library do check out the documentation which allows you to do spies and mocks and even faking timers faking xhr request or even doing some sandbox it's a very powerful library it definitely needs a little bit in depth look as a final note, we will do a little bit of browser testing, a very simple browser testing with Mocha and Chai. So for this, let's create a new directory and I'll simply call it browser. And let's look at a few links that we'll be using. Firstly, we'll be using Selenium, which is browser automation framework. And we will also have to download the Chrome driver. So we will go through one by one. But first, why don't we go ahead and npm init so let me get inside the folder browser and do a simple npm init. And after this, we will definitely do an npm install of firstly Selenium web driver. We also need to do an install of Chai, of course, and then Mocha and save dev. And now when we open it up in text editor, and here you will see in package.json, we have the relevant modules. So firstly, we have to download the jar file. So go ahead, click the latest version here. Let me open another terminal in desktop. So in order to start this jar file, we'll simply do java-jar and pass in the file name, which is selenium server with a version dot jar. All right, and there you go, launching a standalone server. The next thing we need to do is we also need to download the Chrome driver. So for this, go ahead and download it for your operating system. So I'll simply download the Mac 32. And once you unzip it, you will see that it is basically a single executable. So all you need to do is go to your desktop and basically move the Chrome driver file. Probably you'll need to do a sudo move to slash usr slash bin slash chrome driver or rather the path where all your executables are stored now i have already done that so if you do ll usr slash bin chrome driver so there you go i already have that file and uh, that's it i think uh, these are the two things you need to download and a couple of uh, npm installs so why don't we go ahead and uh, write the first test and before we do the browser testing, of course, we need the website itself. So why don't we just create another new folder and call it the app. And inside the app, I will have an index.html file. And it will be really simple. I'll just have a title, which we will test later on. And let's have a header one with an ID of header. And we'll simply call it hello. So later on, we'll just test the title and we'll test that the content is hello. Now we will execute, uh, or rather we will serve this index.html with a web server. Of course, you can use Apache, Nginx, or anything else. Just for the ease of it, I will create a server.js node file. And I will cut and paste a bunch of uh, code. It basically means read this file and serve it up in localhost port 8000. Once again, if you do not want to use Node, you can go ahead and use other web servers. We are just serving a simple index.html file. So I will go to the browser and then app folder and simply do node server.js. And once you do it, if you come to the 
browser and if you do index or rather localhost port 8000 there you go you will see the same file so this is the file that we want to test with selenium web driver but we want to automate the testing so i'll go ahead and create index spec.js the test file and inside the test file let's write the code to test this website so of course var web driver will need to require the selenium web driver and we also need to define the client which is a new web driver dot builder dot with capabilities and this is where we will pass in an object with the browser name so for our purpose we will test it with chrome and we will simply do dot build and we will also do var chai and finally expect pretty similar to what we did before so now let's do the browser testing so we will once again start with describe say from home page function why don't we initialize the home URL so it will simply be HTTP localhost 8000 and here we will apply a before each hook and this will have a callback and we will say client dot get URL so we'll pass in the URL parameter which means uh, localhost port 1000 and then we will pass in the function and simply we will just call done and after that after all the test is done we also need to close the client so we'll simply pass in done once again and client dot quit right so now that I have initialized it and also kind of did the closure let's define the test so there'll be two kinds of tests so the very first one will be returns the title of the page and the second one will be returns the header one text of the page so even before we implement it why don't we go and run the test so once again we are running the jar file and it has launched the standalone server and of course our web server that is serving the page is running and uh, simply after this we will do mocha index spec of course I have a little spelling error line 18 let's run it again so we have to make sure that the test is failing for the right purpose as well and there you have it it is running the test but it is uh, having a timeout so each time we will just have it 5000 so let's run it once again and yep it now clearly doesn't fail it says that it is pending so now why don't we complete the test and of course it will have a callback so we will do client dot get title and then dot den function it will return the title so let's do an expect so expect title to equal what did we have browser testing and done why don't we try it out so one of the tests is implemented and it looks like there is an error so let's check what is the error Ah, so it is expecting actually a small letter T is that so so let's go back to our text editor open up the index.html yep it is a small T so I'm going to go back and uh, that means the test is working change it to a small T and let's run it once again and there you go the first test is passing why don't we similarly go ahead and implement the second test which is uh, testing for the text of the header so it will also have a callback so client dot find element web driver dot buy dot ID and we'll call it header dot get text dot then and we'll pass in a function which will basically return the text and let's expect text to dot equal hello why don't we remove the exclamation mark and we will simply do a done right so let's run this test and it seems like it's failing well that's because it has an exclamation mark as correctly tested yep because if we go back to the index.html there's a little exclamation mark so why don't we add in the exclamation mark and run our test for the one last time and there you go our browser test is passing 
And uh, finally, for the build link of the episode, I decided to uh, give a shout out to Papers We Love, which is uh, sort of a meetup that we can hold in our respective cities or wherever we are living. It basically goes through research papers. And I thought uh, whether you're interested in computer science, data structures, or even hardware related topics, it's great to go through the academic world and understand the fundamentals. So do give uh, Papers We Love a little bit of eyeball and uh, get to know the research and academic world to know the fundamentals. And yep, that's it for this episode of Build Podcast on Mocha. And for the rest of the episodes, you can go to build-podcast.com and subscribe via RSS, iTunes, Vimeo, YouTube, GitHub, or Twitter. Thank you. Goodbye.